Jim Jones and the Bible version issue. Uh, this is going to be kind of an interesting study. Uh, I'm going to show you here in just a few minutes what prompted this, but it is actually pretty interesting and I learned some things myself and I'm going to show you the information here. And uh, like I said, this is going to be an interesting study. Uh, we're going to start out with a recording, an older recording, where Dr. Peter Ruckman is refuting a wicked apostate new versionist by the name of Dr. Clark. I'm not sure what his first name was or what. He, he's supposed to be a pastor somewhere, you know, new version pastor. And he was all upset because some of his congregation left his church because of the Bible version issue. And so this Dr. Clark came out with a recording attacking Peter Ruckman personally and all King James Bible believers. It's a great recording. I highly recommend getting it. You can get it at Bible Baptist Bookstore and uh, listen to it because it, it, Dr. Ruckman refutes a lot of good or a lot of these points that this wicked apostate comes up with. But I just want to play uh, just a little sample of this recording where this Dr. Clark um, insinuates that King James Bible believers are similar to Jim Jones. Okay, so let's listen to this. Well, by the same token, one could argue that Jim Jones of late and unlimited memory or that Jimmy Carter are supernaturally inspired men. Imagine that. Imagine a man so mentally sick that he used that as an analogy. Imagine that. When the Bible says where the word of a king is, there's power. Imagine a man so dumb that he thinks with the universal language being English, which it is, that God would use an English king with a Jewish name after saying where the word of a king is, there's power, and that that analogy is like Jim Jones and Jimmy Carter. Imagine a man that mentally disturbed, thinking that's an analogy. Imagine that. And then imagine such a man thinking he's qualified to preach because he only had one married certificate. Imagine that, if you can. It's a shame that Jim Jones had not heard of this little uh, trick of nomenclature. He might have thereby been able to deceive a few hundred more into the awful death trap into which he led them in his cult. Well, how could he, son? He was in a democracy, not a monarchy, where the word of a king is there is power. And he wasn't a king. Aren't people strange? I tell you, my friend, when men grab at straws like this to prove something, they are desperate in indeed. Don't you know we're really upset about it? I mean, I'm going to worry about the tide comes in, the fish start moving. One wonders whether to laugh or cry at such reasoning. We know what to do with your reasoning. Laugh at it, kid. The idea of somebody liking the Protestant Reformation Bible, the greatest book that's ever been printed in the universal language of the end time, to Jim Jones and Jimmy Carter. Imagine a man actually trying to convince you that's an argument. And have you think he's trying to get a sane approach? <laughs> You know, too much is too much after a while. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? All right, now he doesn't come right out and say King James only people are like Jim Jones and his followers, but he very strongly implies that, you know. And uh, recently, uh, there was a comment made on one of my videos by one of my sisters in Christ and a very wicked little apostate here on YouTube came out and he attacked her and he wrote me this nasty email and, and said that uh, that one of your followers has said something very vile and all this stuff. Uh, I just want to point out I don't have followers, okay? I have people that watch my videos to learn the truth. Anybody that's ever watched my videos knows that I point to this as the final authority, not to me. I mean, give me a break. But see, when you can't answer the Bible version issue, when you can't answer with facts and documentation, you have to go after the person. It's, you know, okay, it's happened before, it'll happen again. Normally, I wouldn't even bother wasting any time answering somebody like this. I wrote back to him and I said, I don't talk with, uh, or I don't speak with Pharisees. And I don't, I don't waste time on them. Because uh, these people, they don't want answers to their questions, they just want to make trouble. But 
I'm going to do an answer to this guy as in the form of, it, of a video because it's a very interesting subject and I want to show you some very interesting things about Jim Jones that most people don't know about. But first I want to show you this email, parts of it, uh, where he comes out and it's interesting because he did, he, when he wrote to me, he wouldn't call me personally Jim Jones. He wouldn't write that to me, but he went to this sister in Christ and he called, he said, you know, he was comparing me to Jim Jones which is absolutely just absurd to the extreme. I mean, I'm not even close to being like Jim Jones. Give me a break. But let's look at some of this stuff here. He says, uh, there was another man who suggested this. His name was Jim Jones. He was a cult leader. You're probably, you probably know the story. He, like Husky 394 XP with a microphone, as Husky has YouTube, decided what sin what was sin and what was righteousness. Oh, brother. Jones, like Husky and KJV Onlyus, had to put his stamp of approval on Bibles to read who to order from. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jones, this guy is a horrible speller. I'm, uh, you know, I'll just read it here. Jones, like KJV Onlyus, declared it was as sin to read from this book or that book. What I want to know is who gave Jones such wisdom. Well, that would be Satan. Who gave Husky such wisdom? That'd be the Lord. Who gave you such wisdom? That'd be the Lord too, this sister in Christ. And who gave you the permission to use the Word of God to wipe your stinking? And I, I'm not going to get into this. This, is a, this guy's just foul. This comment, without a doubt, is the most despicable comment I have ever read on YouTube. Just how long do you think God is going to allow you to blaspheme the Word of God he decides what his word is, not you or Husky or any KJV onlyist or Jim Jones. I bring up Jim Jones because he was a cult leader, just as Husky is. And you are a dutiful minion follower in lockstep. And when Husky gives his almighty, all-knowing permission, you will be burning the word of God and using it as dot, dot, dot. Okay. <laughs> This guy has got some mental problems, all right? Uh, Mark 0454 is a lunatic, okay? I'm talking seriously disturbed to compare me to, to Jim Jones, and now I'm the leader of the King James Only movement? Give me a break, you know? Oh, yeah, okay, sure. I mean, there are men here on YouTube that know as much, if not more, a, a lot of them more than I do on the Bible version issue. I'm not the leader of it. Give me an it. This guy's a nut. And like I said, stuff like that, I get that, you know, occasionally. I don't even bother with it. But I wanted to use this ridiculous nonsense to show you what really was going on with Jim Jones. Because I've heard this a couple times now. You know, they try to say that King James Bible believers are like Jim Jones and the people's temple that he ran. Well, I'm going to prove that is very false in this video. We're going to look about this whole thing here. Okay, let's look at what Jim Jones was really into. Now, what type of church was Jones part of? Well, he was part of the Pentecostal church. Now, he was not a Pentecostal, as in there are some Pentecostals that I believe are saved. You know, I, my grandparents are Pentecostal. My great-grandfather was a Pentecostal preacher, you know, I believe he was saved. I, I know that they're saved. I never met my great-grandfather, but, um, you know, I think it probably that he was pr probably saved. Like I said, never met him, but, you know, Jim Jones was part of the Pentecostal. He, he took a lot of the Pentecostal beliefs and kind of warped them, but it was definitely the Pentecostal thing that he was into. So let's take a look here at some videos uh, about Jim Jones and the Pentecostal movement. In Lynn, Jim Jones looked for community and couldn't find community in Lynn as a town, which had a population of, what, a thousand people. But he did find community in the Pentecostal church. He saw that they were a surrogate home. He saw that the preachers were like father figures. To After they sang one or two songs, the whole place was lit up. Okay, 
Okay, two points I want to make here. Um, first of all, it's interesting at the end there about of the Pentecostal thing, the first video clip, he talks about that uh, people view the pastor there at the, in the Pentecostal church, they view him as a father figure. Keep that in mind, we're going to get back to that later. But then that music that was played in that wicked people's temple there of Jim Jones, <laughs> You couldn't, I mean, you wouldn't catch me dead in a place like that, okay? I wouldn't even walk through the doorway of a place like that. I mean, it, no way. I am radically against that kind of atmosphere in a supposed church, okay? I, it, it's just ridiculous. And uh, it's interesting, too, because it didn't, it wasn't just fleshly, carnal, wicked music and, and everything else. It was also fake healing services. And here's a little bit of a video clip showing that in Jim Jones's church, the People's Temple. Check this out. One of the most incredible healings to me was this little old lady, and she was in a wheelchair. Jim said, darling, you know, today is your day. We're gonna, you're gonna get healed today. So we're gonna, we're gonna heal those legs of yours. You're going to walk again. And the whole auditorium went totally crazy. Come forth, my dear. Stand up. Take that step. Bless your heart. Take that step. And she takes this real slow, shaky step. She said, I can feel it. And he said, yes, I know you can feel it. Now take your other leg and do it. And it's another real slow, sh shaky step. And he says, now I want you to walk toward me. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward, darling. You can do it. And she starts taking forward steps. And pretty soon, she is walking. And she starts walking up one of the aisles. And pretty soon, she's running. Well, by this time, the whole congregation's running down these aisles with us. We're all just running around the aisles, just hooping and hollering up a storm. Later, I found out that this person that I had seen healed and cried with was really one of the secretaries made up to look crippled and blind. Never shall forget what he's done for me. Oh, 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 for me. I never shall forget what he's done for me. Isn't that ridiculous? And I'm real sorry to tell you this, but I have heard many first-hand accounts of faking these sign gifts, you know, uh, which it's not even scriptural, you know, okay, the first century Christians, the sign gifts of the apostles were given to convert the Jews, all right, this whole Pentecostal movement is a lie, it's a whole system based on lies, sorry, but it is, the, even the name Pentecost, Pentecostal, excuse me, you know, they say, well, you know, we base it off the day of Pentecost. You know, well, that's a Jewish feast day that happens every year. It's not some magical day that happened in Acts chapter 2 and never again. It happened numerous times throughout the Bible, every year, as a matter of fact. So the whole religious system is based on lies. Not going to go off on that. But uh, what about Jim Jones and his beliefs in the Bible? Now, if you come to this channel here, to my channel, or to any of the other Bible-believing channels out there, King James Bible Believers, we believe that this book right here is perfect. We believe that this is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Anything that you do or anything that you're taught must be filtered through the King James Bible. That's what we believe. We exalt this book. We don't worship the book in the sense of putting it on a pedestal somewhere and bowing down to it. We don't do that. But we admit that this is God's word to men. Perfect, inspired, inerrant, infallible, whatever else you want to say about it. This is God's book. That's what we believe. Now, 
these new versionists will try to claim that we are like Jim Jones. And they're one, one of these idiots said that I am, you know, very similar to Jim Jones. Okay, so why don't we see here, I'm going to show you a video of exactly how Jim Jones felt about the Bible. Take a look at this. He said, a lot of you people, you Christian people come in and you're so hung up on this Bible. He said, this black book has held down black people for the last 200 years. He said, but I'm going to show you this has no power. So he leaned way back like a football player and he flung it. And when he flung it and let it go, the place got dead quiet. Like and he waited till it hit the floor. Pow! When it hit the floor, he stood and he looked back and forth. He said, now, did you see any lightning come from the sky and strike me dead? You're going to help yourself or you'll get no help. There's only one hope of glory. That's within you. Nobody's going to come out of the sky. There's no heaven up there. We'll have to make heaven down here. And he said, what you need to believe in is what you can see. He said, if you see me as your friend, I'll be your friend. As you see me as your father, I'll be your father for those of you that don't have a father. He said, if you see me as your savior, I'll be your savior. He said, even so, if you see me as your God, I'll be your God. Isn't that something? And, you know, you can watch these clips about Jim Jones. I will warn you, the guy was a just a extreme sex pervert. I mean, big time. There's some very filthy stuff in some of these videos. They don't show anything or whatever, but some of the language and stuff that was used and some of the things that he was doing, it's quite vexing. Okay, Jim Jones was a very wicked devil. Very wicked. You know, and, and again, to compare me to him, give me a break. But I want to point out two things there that, that were said in that video clip. First of all, Jim Jones saying that uh, nobody's going to come out of the sky, there's no heaven up there, we'll all, or we'll have to make heaven down here. Now, when have I ever said anything like that? Okay, and it, it's interesting you say, well, has anybody else ever said that? Well, actually, yes. Uh, it was Westcott, I believe it was. Yeah, B.F. Westcott. He, Brooke Falls Westcott, one of the original New Version men, he came out and he said that uh, heaven is not a, a, a uh, place, it's a state of mind. And he said that we can find it about us here, the glory of our earthly life. That's in my real Bible version issue exposed. That's what he believed. And here Jim Jones is repeating it. Okay? I don't believe that. Why would you label me as a man like Jim Jones? Pretty stupid. But uh, another thing he says is, of course, that, you know, if you need a God, I will be your God. Now, when has any King James Bible believer ever said that? Ridiculous. But is there a group of people out there who have said the thing about you can become a God or a Christ? Well, the answer to that is, yeah. The Catholic Catechism teaches that man can become God. And if you want to get right down to it, the vicarious, vicarious Philly D, faithful substitute God, that's one of the, the titles of the Pope. And they believe that the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, you know, they call him, they believe that he is a substitute for Jesus Christ. And they worship him as God. That's what a real true devout Catholic believes. So, whose beliefs were, was uh, Jim Jones, this philosophy of his, that he will be your God, he will be your Savior? Now, who does that line up more with? King James Bible believers or the Catholics that put out the new versions, the Vatican versions. Why would you compare Jim Jones to King James Bible believers? It's not even close. But let's continue on here. Now the question comes up, what is, was Jim Jones a Catholic? Well, I want to show you something very interesting here. I have here all of the comics that uh, Jack Chick puts out. Really informative, very good stuff. And don't put little stupid comments down the, in the thing there, comment section, oh, Jack Chick this and Jack Chick that. Whatever, you know. I mean, I get tired of that stuff. This, these comics have some exceptional information in them. And there are a number of 
uh, series here on a man, an ex-Jesuit priest named Alberto Rivera. And I'll tell you, some of the information he brings out is just amazing. And i got to find it here. should have had it marked. But he actually goes into Jim Jones and discusses what Jim Jones, what that whole thing was about. Okay, so let's take a look. It's page number 30 in the Double Cross Alberto Part 2. You can see that there. Let's take a look at this. Here you have Alberto, a uh, drawing of him, and it says, The Jonestown Massacre was well planned as a military, religious, and political event. The truth behind this is well hidden. And then he goes on to the, talk about this uh, audio tape there about the Jonestown Massacre and, and all of everything. But then we go down here to this drawing of Jim Jones, and it says, Jim Jones was a student of Father Divine, a demon-possessed preacher, deep into the occult. Jones was a powerful warlock and a well-trained Jesuit. Jones was into the ecumenical and charismatic work. He preached the love gospel, the social gospel as well. Most of his followers were Roman Catholics and from Roman Catholic backgrounds. Others were unsaved Protestants from a variety of denominations. In 1953, he established a Christian Assembly of God church. In 1962, he became a missionary to Brazil, associated with the Christian Assembly of God, which he founded. Okay, the Christian Assembly of God there, too. I, I need to point that out. doesn't mean the, the Assembly of God you know, denomination, which I have issues you know, with them, too. But getting back to it, it says here, 1964, Jones was ordained under the Disciples of Christ Church. His key people were Roman Catholics. And like a good Jesuit... Jim Jones ordered his followers to call him Father and pray to him in 1973. And you'll see that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you this clip here from an elderly black woman who was part of uh, Jonestown and then later went on to um, the uh, colony over there in, in Guyana. And she actually was one of the ones that was killed by him. So let's take a look at this. Well, I'll see you later. Now, if Jim Jones wasn't a Catholic, uh, a lot of people might say, oh, that's not really any proof and everything. Well, he, uh, if he wasn't one, he sure dressed like one. I mean, here you can see the pictures. He's, he's wearing the uh, Roman collar around his neck and walking around in robes and everything. Sure looks like a Catholic to me. Well, let's continue on here, the next page, page 31. And uh, it gets into the thing of uh, top political leaders were actually coming and visiting with Jim Jones. Uh, the president's wife came and met with him. Isn't that kind of weird? Why would the president's wife go and meet with just some regular preacher? Very strange. And Jerry Brown, uh, who was a... Jesuit trained, he came and also met with Jim Jones. So it's very odd. And uh, here's a picture actually with Jim Jones meeting with, I forget even who this is anymore. This might be Jerry Brown, but it was it was a man. And look at the handshake he's giving. Okay, it's a Masonic handshake. They put the thumb on the knuckle, you know. They don't they don't shake normal. They they put the hand on the knuckle or the thumb on the knuckle, the knuckle or the hollow or the knuckle or the hollow, depending on which degree or whatever. How do you explain that? Weird stuff. Now here's, this is very interesting, the conclusion here to this whole Jonestown thing. A couple good points are made. Let's read this. It says, I believe all of this was part of the setup for the massacre to receive worldwide coverage. Jim Jones planned and prepared under instructions from Rome to sacrifice his flock to fulfill his Jesuit oath. And then it's written, the Jesuit oath is on page 12. You can look it up on the internet. It's, it's there. It's available. When it was over, the world was in shock. The press and TV worldwide implied Jim Jones was a crazy, Bible-believing fundamentalist. Immediately, all fundamental churches fell under suspicion. What a diabolical conspiracy. And it's still going on. Here we, we had a wicked modern apostate attack me because I'm a Bible believer, and he compares me to Jim Jones. Just ridiculous. 
The cry went up that politicians should pass laws forbidding groups from setting up retreats. This way, Bible believers would have no place to hide when the great wave of persecution from Rome begins. They did the same thing with Waco. Okay, and, and somewhat with Ruby Ridge. You know, you go out and you want to live and you don't want people bothering you and whatever. Oh, you're crazy. You're some kind of a cult or something. So, that's that. And I highly recommend these comics if, if you want to go there and get them at Jack Chick's website. You'll learn a lot. Some very interesting information in there. Okay. Now, finally, a couple more points I want to make here on Jim Jones. Jim Jones was a socialist or communist as another way that you can put that thing. He first set up Jonestown in, in California, and then they went over to Guyana and set the thing up over there. And it was all this thing of you can anybody can come, no matter what you know race you are or whatever else. You come, and we have all things common. And you know he tries to take that from the early part of the Book of Acts, where they where they were doing that, and it later came out. No, we shouldn't be doing this. Whole other study. But he tried to take that thing and, and apply socialistic types of uh, ends to it. And in fact, he even talked about that their true mother was not America, but Russia, communist Russia. So, and there, you know, again, you can look this stuff up on the internet, you can find it. But uh, I'm going to play another video here where Jim Jones is being interviewed. And listen to the last words that he says. I'm going to repeat it in the video, but listen to the last thing that he says. Listen to this. And we feel that the church has great relevance today. Jesus Christ uh, had the most revolutionary teachings uh, to be said, in the sense that he said to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, uh, take in the stranger, minister to those the widows and afflicted in their suffering. And we feel that no one really tried Christianity too effectively or the Judeo-Christian tradition. And if it is tried, and uh, it will be exonerated. And it offers the uh, panacea for world order, for world order, for world order, for world order. Hmm. It offers the panacea for world order. Gee, where have I heard that term world order before? Or a new world order? And Jim Jones is a Bible believer. Yeah, okay, right, you know, I mean, if you are mentally sick, maybe you could make the connection between me and Jim Jones, but, you know, it'd be like comparing night and day. I'm not even close to being like Jim Jones. Absolutely ridiculous. And no King James Bible believer, you know, that's out there telling people the truth, none of us are like Jim Jones. Jim Jones is from this side over here, this Alexandrian side. I don't have one of my Alexandrian Bibles, but... You know, Jim Jones is from that side. He's from the Catholic Vatican, you know, tradition over the authority of Scripture. I can be a God. That's the side that he's from. He's not a King James Bible believer. Absolutely not. And let me tell you something. To claim that Bible believers are a cult, you'd have to be very wicked and stupid to make that claim. Okay, this is where freedom is. The truth will set you free. You know, there's not one member of Bible Believers Fellowship, the church that I'm part of, there's not one member here that's forced to come. Not one. They'll go, you know, our people, we go out, we'll visit other churches, you know, go talk with people about anything. We take any material from people. We refute it. We don't force people into anything. Give me a break. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay? And one more video I want to play. Uh, where he talks about, you know, he's going off and getting all charismatic and everything, and he talks about socialism, social justice. So here it is. I represent divine principle, total equality, a society where people own all things in common, where there is no rich or poor, where there are no races, wherever there's people struggling for justice and righteousness, there I am, and there I am involved. So there you have it. The modern social gospel. Uh, I've preached against it. You know, there are churches, so many churches in this area, you know, they put ads in the paper, you know, we'll come mow your yard and we'll do your yard work for you and we'll 
have we have a free clothing bank and we give food to the needy and all this other stuff and those same churches they wouldn't offend anybody with the gospel of Jesus Christ Christ if their life depended on it okay socialism is not the purpose of the church the purpose of the church is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and get people saved that's what it's about you know and sure you know get, do nice things for people whatever but that's not what it's about it's about getting people saved and these wicked apostate devil churches are the ones that are promoting the same thing that Jim Jones promoted again King James Bible believers are going around getting people offended and things because we preach against sodomy we preach against you know the other cults out there like Catholicism Mormonism the Islam things like that you know we offend people with the truth okay these new churches these new version churches they aren't offensive the only people they offend is the Lord and King James Bible believers <laughs> so let me just uh, review the evidence that was presented in this video okay comparing me and other Bible believers to Jim Jones let's look at the differences Jim Jones was a fake healer he did this fake healing stuff to get people's money and to con them Bible believers we believe that the sign gifts were for the Jews and that they aren't around anymore you know I do believe God can heal people but it's because of praying and fasting and things like that you know and, and eating right not living in sin that's why God can heal people you know it's not the thing of going over and saying be healed blam and they're healed okay that gift has passed away and the only way that you can pull that off today is either by faking it like Jim Jones was doing or by satanic power which you know I think Jim Jones had some of that too Jim Jones and his People's Temple had fleshly rock music as part of their worship service it was a flesh service a carnival you know uh, Bible believers we believe in spiritual songs and hymns hymns and songs that bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ not fleshly wicked carnal music with a bunch of half-naked women up front dancing around you know like they do at most of these modern churches Jim Jones rejects the Bible Bible believers we exalt the Bible so much so that we're called bibliolaters you know <laughs> we're not the same don't be ridiculous Jim Jones desires worship for himself he wants to have people you know calling him God and everything else Bible believers we want to see worship of Jesus Christ and we point people to Jesus Christ I've said it before I'll say it again if you're a King James Bible believer or a pastor especially your purpose should be to point people to Jesus Christ and to the Word of God for the English speaking people King James Bible that should be your purpose Jim Jones was a socialist or a communist would be another way to put it a Bible believer is a capitalist okay we believe that if you don't work you shouldn't eat like it says there in 2 Thessalonians 3.10 that's it it's not that you get greedy and you crush other people and stuff like that no it's just a Bible believer reads from the scriptures that a man is to provide for his own he's to be a hard worker the wife is to be a keeper at home she's to be one that raises the children that she guides the house that's what the Bible teaches not social justice socialism that everybody you know there should be nobody that's making more money because they're working harder okay that's not of the Lord that's atheistic okay the, the whole Karl Marx system Lenin and Stalin and Mao Zedong and everything look at what they did but I just want to make that point too these idiotic atheists out there these fools they come out and they talk about oh your your religion has killed and slaughtered millions of people what about atheistic communism you want to talk about millions and millions of people being slaughtered Lenin and Stalin and Mao Zedong killed far more than any religion ever did okay and then you study their religion that are killing people it's always the Catholics or the Muslims okay Catholicism and Islam are not part of Bible believing Christians go off on that all day uh, Jim Jones was pro Catholic okay he was a Catholic essentially a Jesuit okay and he was for Catholicism 
a Bible believer knows the danger of Catholicism, and it's not that we hate people because they're Catholic, it's we don't we hate the system of Catholicism because we know what it is. It's bondage. All right? It's we are right, you're wrong, and we're going to kill you. Okay? King James Bible believers claim to have spiritual power, but we don't claim temporal power like the Catholic Church does. The Catholic Church teaches that they have the right to have the sword. And I don't mean the sword of the spirit. I mean the physical sword and to go out and forcibly convert people. And they still do it today, by the way. That's not a Dark Ages type of a thing. They've done it in the 20th century and they're going to do it again. And God have mercy on this nation if the Catholic Church ever takes over. Uh, Jim Jones was a sex pervert. Okay? And uh, he was all for it. He taught it from the pulpit. And of course, you know, <laughs> again, Catholicism, what's the tie in there? You know, Jim Jones, perversion, Catholicism, perversion, pedophiles, sodomites. Yep. A Bible believer, we are against sodomy and we preach against sodomy and against fornication and against whoremongers. We preach against it. Okay? Jim Jones was lost. Obviously. The guy's frying in hell right now. Good riddance. Bible believers are saved. And we know we're saved. Not because we're good people or because we're count our, on our own self-righteousness. It's because we have a perfect written record. Okay? And we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And we put our faith 100% in Him. Not in ourselves. That's why we can know we're saved. Jim Jones, he likes to drink Kool-Aid. <laughs> Me personally, I hate Kool-Aid. You know, <laughs> a little funny thing there on the end. You know, you drink Kool-Aid, whatever. Just make sure it doesn't have cyanide in it. So that's it for this study. These new version people will will grasp at anything that they can to get away from final authority, and they'll call you all kinds of names. Like I, I said at the beginning, normally I don't even care about this type of stuff. These wicked little devils that come along and call me names and whatever, doesn't bother me one bit. But I'm making this video to show people, because this is a very common thing. They'll compare you to Jim Jones and all this stuff. Jim Jones, if he had a side, it would have been over here. The New Version side, the, the Catholic, the Jesuits. That's who he was part of. Okay, that was the agenda that he was trying to get through, talking about bringing in a world order. He wasn't a King James Bible believer. He was not a fundamental Christian. Okay, he was a lost, Jesuit, wicked, fake con artist. And a pervert, too. I, might have, I have to throw that in there, too. All right, so don't worry about it. These stupid new versionists that, that just keep attacking King James Bible believers. If you get to a point where they call you Jim Jones or compare you to Jim Jones, just laugh about it. That's what I do. So that's it. Thank you for watching.